Here are six Lightroom editing tips to make your autumn photos look awesome. With tip number one, you want to separate the autumn tones from all the other colors. For that, we want to head into the color mixer and there start with the saturation. To separate the colors, I am going to drop aqua, blue, purple and magenta all the way down. I'm also going to quite heavily drop the green tones. I'm not going to drop them all the way because for this image, this would make it look a little bit too weird. Now by doing this, we are left with red, orange and yellow. We can further increase this effect by bringing up the saturation of those warmer tones. As you can see, doing this will make the autumn colors pop, but we can adjust things a little further. Let's head into the luminance tab. We can give those autumn tones a little more brightness or darkness, depending on what we want. Let's say we want to brighten up the autumn colors. I'm going to raise the orange luminance as well as the yellow luminance, the red one and the green luminance. Keep in mind, raising the luminance will reduce the saturation. Finally, we can separate the color a little more by making use of the hue. Looking at this image, one color tone that is still standing out a little bit is greenish tone in the back. To prevent that, I'm going to bring down the green hue. And right at this point, we have enhanced those autumn tones by just using the color mixer. For tip number two, let's make the autumn tones more intense. For that, we want to head into the calibration tab all the way down. The first and most impactful slider will be the blue primary hue. We want to bring that one down. Although the name suggests this slider will affect the blue tones, it will quite heavily affect those autumn colors. So by lowering the hue, we will make them more intense. We can also bring up the saturation if we want, making them pop a little more, but we can also play around with the red primary and green primary hue and saturation. So let's raise the red saturation first and maybe even raise the green primary hue. This way, all the leaves lying on the ground will be more intense by just using the calibration tab. This was the image before and here with just a bunch of calibration adjustments. Another way with which we can add warmth to an autumn scene is the color grading tab, formerly known as split toning. So let's go right ahead, open up the color grading panel. Here we can set a certain color tone for the highlights, the midtones, the shadows, and even globally for the whole image. For this picture, we are working with a daytime shot, it would make sense to make the brighter areas of the image a little warmer, making those autumn tones more intense. So what we can do here is to head into the highlights. Then we want to set up the hue. You can either click in the color wheel or just make use of that hue slider down here. And I want to look for a very warm hue, not in the red range, but more in the orange direction right here. And I'm going to bring up the saturation. Now check out what happens to the highlights. This almost appears like it's changing the leaves colors, but we don't have to stop at this point. We can also target the midtones again, look for a warm color tone somewhere in the orange range and bring up the saturation. See how this will make the foliage look way more intense. But with the split toning, always keep in mind to not overdo it. You probably in most cases don't want to have the same hue or color range for highlights, midtones and shadows. To keep a little bit of color contrast, you can go into the shadows, set the hue to something cold, right in the opposite direction of the previously used warmer color tones and slightly bump up the saturation. And finally, we can of course also make use of the global color wheel, adding a warm hue to the whole image, making the autumn colors even more intense this way. Perfect. For tip number four, let's target those fall colors with different kinds of masks. Go ahead, open up the masking panel, create a new mask. And the first thing we want to try is the color range mask. With the eyedropper active, I'm going to click somewhere here in the trees in the back. As you can see with the overlay active, we are nicely targeting all those fall color tones 
we can make use of the refine slider to expand the mask a little bit, giving it a softer edge. And with this mask, we can do quite a few things. Let's say we want to make the autumn colors a little brighter. For that, simply raise the exposure. However, we can also add a little more contrast to them. Or we could even affect the color. Let's expand the color menu down here. We could make them warmer by increasing the temperature. And of course, we can also give them more saturation. This is looking so much better with those boosted autumn tones. But we are not done yet. Let's create another mask. This time I'm going to use a linear gradient covering the top portion of the image. With this mask active, click on point color. Grab the eyedropper tool and again click somewhere in the autumn foliage. Doing this, we'll select this exact color tone right within this linear gradient. Now we can make use of the hue, saturation and luminance sliders to adjust the color to our liking. Let's say we want to make them even brighter by bringing up the luminance. We can also add some more saturation. And what's really cool about that is we can also change the hue. The point color tool will also show you the starting color on the left side and the end color on the right side. So you can always see what you have been doing in this point color tool. Now, if you're working with the forest scene like this, where the fall colors are not fully there yet, what we can do is to go into the basic tab, click on profile, choose browse, and expand the artistic panel. Right here, choose artistic free. This will give us a very warm profile, which changes the foliage from green to orange. We can work on this look by increasing the amount of the profile, giving us some more intense colors in here. However, right at this point, it does look a little bit strange. So we want to go once again into the color mixer panel. And here we want to work on the hue to give it this more natural autumn look. What we need to do here is to bring down the green hue. We also want to bring down the yellow hue. And let's bring up the orange hue. With the hue setup, we also want to work on the saturation. I'm going to drop the orange saturation, which will mostly affect the foreground. Watch what happens. And I'm going to bring up the yellow saturation and the green saturation. And of course, we can also target the luminance to change things, bringing up the orange luminance to make the foreground a little brighter and bring up the yellow luminance to affect the foliage. Just like this, we have created some pretty intense autumn tones. For tip number six, especially with foggy scenes like this, try working with less contrast. What I mean by that, usually we want to increase contrast to make an image pop. In this case, to make the foggy scene a little more gloomy and interesting, I want to reduce contrast and basically achieve the opposite effect. So what I want to do first is to bring down the contrast itself. But we cannot only use the contrast slider, we can reduce contrast in other ways. We can, for example, bring down the highlights. We can also increase the shadows. And we can increase the blacks. Now at this point, we end up with a very, very flat image. But a flat image like this works really, really well together with low exposure. So I'm going to bring down the exposure. And by doing this, I'm adding a lot more mood to this scene. We are missing just a bit of highlights. So what we want to do is to bring up the whites. And here we have an image with a low amount of contrast, but it's still very, very moody. And as I said, this works great for foggy landscapes and especially works great with forest scenes. So I hope you can make use of these six Lightroom editing tips for your next autumn photos. If you have any questions left, feel free to ask in the comments. And thank you so much for watching this video.